yung si ano. Um, but doesn't mean we're gonna forget also about irregularities. Now, Justice, there seems to be a little victory, at least kanina, and that little victory is the Supreme Court has finally issued this TRO. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened here and what are the implications and what should be the next move by those who want accountability? Well, well Richard, uh, they had a plan, the uh, the government uh, to of Marcos Jr. to transfer... 89.9 billion about 90 billion of of trust funds of uh, PhilHealth to transfer it to the national treasury the national treasury will give it to other agencies uh, we were able to stop the transfer of uh, 30 billion only so the 60 billion was approved earlier before the TRO and that's not covered by the TRO. So what we're trying to do is to appeal to the president that uh, to just freeze the use of these funds because the Supreme Court could later on, I believe the Supreme Court will declare it unconstitutional and it would be unfair that the funds, the bulk of the funds would have been spent and it could not be returned anymore because even under the, even if the law says that the government official responsible for the release for that unconstitutional act will be personally liable, you cannot recover ninety billion or sixty billion from Secretary of Finance. Yeah. He, he he will not be able to return that money. So because therefore the damage is irreparable; it cannot be repaired. It cannot be. Uh, they cannot reimburse that money, so it should be stopped. But the problem is, uh, we were able to stop only thirty billion because the 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 funds have been transferred sixty billion. So we are appealing to the president to be fair. I mean, he is in control of the executive department, and he should tell his people don't spend that because it could be declared unconstitutional, and it's unfair to the poorest of the poor of Filipinos who depend on medicine and other health benefits from field health uh, because they cannot find any other, there's no other source of life-saving medicine for them. It's only field health. So uh, we're appealing to the president to just stop the use of these funds. So that's, that's the situation, basically, uh, because I think with the Supreme Court saying that we issuing the TRO, you issue a TRO if there is a clear legal right in favor of the petitioner. We are the petitioner. So in fact, the Supreme Court is saying there's a clear legal right. And second, uh, the second requirement is the damage cannot be repaired. So you have to issue the TRO. And in this case, the damage cannot be repaired because nobody can return 60 billion pesos. Well, I mean, let me disagree with you, Justice, on that. Last time, baka namang pera dyan sa Batangas. Just kidding. Parang buong familia lahat. I'm just kidding. Okay. Baka naman, mga natin dyan. But, uh, ano, wala lang yan. How much lang yan? No, no, just kidding. Uh, Justice, so what you're saying here is etong decision ng Supreme Court, Corte Suprema, is enough signal for BBM to just do executive corrective move here and wag na hintayin mapunta pa to all the way until next year. Is that what you're saying? Na yes. Sorry, just tell but, us something and, is wrong, and, so you should do it. The rest you should do it yourself. Yeah. The, the argument that they need the money, there's a solution for that. PhilHealth can buy treasury bonds, and so the cash goes to the government, they can use it. But at least PhilHealth does not lose the money. The, the money is still there when the money is needed by the poorest of the poor of Filipinos. But if you allow this to be just taken out and without no chance of being returned, that's that's terrible because it's, that, that's the money of the poor, the poorest of the poor. So I think the happy solution is for the president to say, okay, return the money, fill that, you buy treasury bonds, so the cash goes back. And the government can use it for whatever it wants. So that's, that's my uh, proposal. That's 
Right, that's your proposal. And of course, I don't want to, you know, I'm sure there's there's confidentiality here, but to the degree that you can say in public, do you feel there's enough amenability uh, uh, by by the commander-in-chief to this compromise or correction, if I can put it? Yeah, he has control because the president has control of the executive department. He can reverse any of their decisions or direct them to do a particular act. That's the meaning of control. So ultimately, it's his call. That's why I'm making it public. It's the call of the president. Mr. President, there is a solution. And you can do this to save the poorest of the poor. The ball is in his court right now. I yes. guess the court has done its part. Just quickly, before we go to the West Philippines in the latter part of this discussion, uh, Justice, um, I mean, what is your read uh, in terms of uh, what should the opposition do if ever the president is not amenable to make a corrective move? Do you think that you have to make protests? Make some because it's para ng election. Eh. Um, should this be a central issue for the opposition, knowing that Pedema weaponized in mga Duterte yan to cover up for their own even more allegedly heinous crimes? Yes. The, uh... The opposition will use this issue, the filled funds, because this resonates with the poor, with the masa, because you're taking away money that will ayuda ito eh, for them. Eh. So you're taking it away from them. And it's very easy to say it's the administration is responsible for this. They took away your medical ayuda. Yung mga gamot ninyo kinuha nila. That, that's a very powerful uh, 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 argument against the administration and I'm sure they will use it. They're starting to use it already. But but the, to, to stop that from being used, the president can just order the return and then PhilEth can just buy treasury bonds. So the money goes back to the government but at least it was not stolen from the from PhilEth. You know, um, just last point before we transition to West Philippine Sea. Um, again, I don't know to what degree you can say this publicly. Um, what do you feel about the role of the, with all due respect, to the Supreme Court? Because in the Awanak Sabian, but uh, a lot of people have been raising concerns about to what degree is the Supreme Court truly independent and has acted as a check and, check and balance on the excesses of the executive, and especially after what happened to. Former Chief Justice Sereno, um, you know, many people have been talking about brazen politicization uh, within the highest court of the land. Again, I understand this is sensitive for you because you spent some of those years inside when a lot of these trend lines were really reaching their apogee. But do you think that the Supreme Court is on the right direction now, in, 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 especially since Duterte left? But doesn't that also say that they they can only do their job best when there's no authoritarian leader. Therefore, they're not really that effective. You get what I'm saying? Um, and it's a tough. It's a, I, I just want to get your point of view on this. The role of the Supreme Court as a as an institutional check and balance. Because we keep on talking about hearing, Senate, Congress, Quadcom, Sanyo Sanyo Supreme Court, right? Um, you know, uh, what is your take on that, Justice? Well, uh, as you know, Richard, a lot of people are getting. Uh, uh, disillusioned already because of uh, corruption, because of political dynasties. Basically, those two. The third one uh, is the, uh, they call it uh, the cheating in elections. Basically, those are the three issues raised by Anim. You, you know Anim, no? So, and the uh, the undercurrent here is uh, because we're hopeless already, we cannot stop the corruption. They're advocating for RevGov, revolutionary government. I mean, uh, they are laying to the public, okay, there's corruption uh, for every peso of government fund, maybe only 30 centavos are used. The rest are stolen. So this keeps on sinking into the consciousness of the people. 
and they become receptive to Revgov, revolutionary government. Essentially, so, overthrowing the democratic order. Yeah, constitutional democratic so, order. My, my, I've always been for the rule of law, and I said that can be corrected. Uh, we will file this case with the with the with, with the Supreme Court, questioning the transfer of funds, questioning the confidential funds, questioning the failure of Congress to file uh, to to enact an anti uh, dynasty bill law anti-political uh, dynasty law. So the onus now is on the Supreme Court, really. The way I look at it, in the overall uh, scheme of things, uh, we're reaching a boiling point where we have to tell the people, don't think of RevGov because we can still use the rule of law to correct this, uh, this, uh, cancerous, the, this cancerous growth in our society. So that's why I've been fight, filing these cases to, to show that there is a way out. We don't have to resort to a revolutionary government because we can correct it by reasoning it, by bringing it to the court, because the court is the court of last resort. If uh, there is an anomaly in the executive and in the legislative, we go to the court. And that's why we, we brought this issue on field health. Because it really, it really touches on uh, the raw nerve of the poorest of the poor, and they, they could easily be swayed that it's hopeless to 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 uh, to expect justice and fairness in this system of government. So, uh, my point is no, it's not. We we still we can still work within the system. And uh, th that's why we brought this case. So that that is, that is my uh, the motive behind what I'm doing. I'm trying to preserve the rule of law to prevent a collapse. Because if there's a collapse, we don't know what will happen. I mean, that's very important. That's the whole reason why Rizal had to write El Filibusterismo, right? And essentially, the Simon way of doing things, which is burn it down and let's let's you know burn down the whole house. It's not going to end well for anyone, right? Uh, yes. And we will be set back again because any any uh, uh, political uh, political disturbance, upheaval here, will set us back economically. We'll be, we, we will be far behind again. And, and others will exploit it. China will take even more chunks of West Philippines the more yeah. unstable and weak, weak we are internally. So I think people yeah, have to... If we are that. not united... Our enemies, foreign enemies, will take advantage of that. So uh, I think the focus now, the onus is on the Supreme Court to look at this in a broader scheme because people are getting disillusioned. I can feel it. Absolutely. I mean, it, Duterte's sure. victory, right? Uh, Arab's victory, Duterte's victory, even BBM's victory, all of these are protest votes. These are protest votes. I mean, people have just lost faith in reform and rule of law and all of that. So... So if Ibarra was wrong per Rizal and Simon is even more wrong, how can we really push for transformative change justice in ways that liberal reformists were not able to do? Because I think both of us can agree and damerin kakulangan ni Ramos, ni Pinoy, um, despite their best intentions. How do we do it better this time? Dapat ba mas palaban tayo? Should we be even more aggressive and non-forgiving, unforgiving to to masada ba tayong soft? Uh, on on uh, people who are na binabastos yung ating uh, sistema, what should we do? More mobilization? Well, we have to get back our values because we have lost a lot of our values and uh, appeal to the uh, remaining uh, the remaining bastion in government that can correct this uh, this uh, these aberrations, no. So that's why, well, we we won a little victory there in the TRO, but that will be nothing if the entire funds, if the rest of the funds will be lost, no. So we and we have we need this victory to to show to the people you don't have to ask for a rev gov because it can be done. 
if we follow the, we follow the rule of law. I've, I'm always for that, we, that we can solve this to the rule of law. But it's difficult to, to, uh, to, to, to work on this, but we don't have a choice because the, the alternative really is uh, rev go where, where there are no rules. Yeah, absolutely. Desperation is dangerous. I think warning shot na yung kay Digong and how far it could go. With, with So to be fair also, I mean, we can talk about lack of critical thinking because of our education system as we can know. But we also have to, I think this is where I come in, we also have to understand bakit bukas ang tao sa isang katulad ni Digong dahil desperado din sila sa tunay na pagbabago. Except yung nakuha natin pagbabago ay mas 